This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. Edge because it has curved sides. Both sides are curved, just like the S6 Edge and S6 Edge Plus. Now, this time around, there is only one Edge model. And that's probably a smart thing that Samsung's consolidating a little bit. So if you go with the S7 Edge, you're getting the plus size model. It's a 5.5 inch phone, though it's not that much bigger than the regular S7 model. Now we've already reviewed the Galaxy S7, so just about everything here is the same. The same screen resolution, the same CPU, the same RAM, the same cameras, storage, all that sort of thing. So we're gonna go and speed through this a bit for one of our reviews. I know our reviews do tend to be long, so we're not gonna cover everything in excruciating detail all over again, but we're gonna talk about what makes the Edge edgy and whether it's the right phone for you. Let's look at it now. So this is the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge with two curves, one on the left, one on the right. That's an actual curved display there. Not that that's unique or because we've seen Samsung do this before, but as ever, it's extremely attractive. It's certainly eye-catching. It sets it apart from every other phone maker's model on the market. So that's pretty neat. Of course, it's gonna cost you. It's gonna cost you $100 more than the standard S7. For your extra money, what do you get? You get a slightly higher capacity battery, 3600 milliamps versus 3000 milliamps in the standard S7, and a bigger display. This is 5.5 inches versus 5.1. Now, miraculously, Samsung did manage to make this 5.5 inch phone without making it huge. It's actually not a whole lot bigger than the regular S7, and we'll show you size comparisons. And it's absolutely dwarfed by the 5.5 inch iPhone 6S Plus. Now, typical of Samsung high-end flagship phones, this will be available on all major carriers in pretty much every country. Here in the United States, where we are all for the big carriers and smaller carriers will have it as well. The standard S7 is $700 full retail. This one is pretty much $800. You know, it might be $796, $799, but you get the idea. So this, of course, is a very expensive phone. What are you getting for your money? In some ways, you might say you're getting more here than you are with the S7 because you're getting that very distinct distinctive design with the dual curved edges. It's also a beautifully made phone. Obviously, it's a looker with the Gorilla Glass 4 front and back available in your choice of gold, black, or silver. The black is a fingerprint magnet, just to warn you though. Other high-end amenities include the Snapdragon 820 processor. That is the fastest processor Qualcomm makes, and it, it's a definite improvement over the Snapdragon 810. Now, those of you who are outside the United States, some countries are going to get Samsung's Exynos CPU of comparable performance, so that's pretty good. 4 gigs of RAM. Now, we've seen that on other phones. It does have to be a high-end phone, but that's always nice. 32 gigs of storage. But the nice and important thing here, making up for the whoopsie that was the Samsung Galaxy S6 family, is... The water resistance is back, as is the micro SD card slot. So good times there. You're also going to get one of the nicest displays on the market. The QHD Super AMOLED display is, as ever, incredibly vibrant and colorful and bright as well. Now, another thing you get if you buy a high-end handset, particularly a Samsung Galaxy S7, S7 Edge, and a couple of others, is the ability to look like a total dork wearing this. No, just kidding. This is the Samsung Gear VR virtual reality headset, and the phone actually goes in this section here. You stare at it in like a little stereoscopic screen, and you can play some pretty neat looking immersive 360 degree 3D games and virtual reality experiences are there too. So a lot of carriers are bundling, not the controller, we, we, we supplied this one ourselves, but they're, they're bundling this for free if you pre-order or buy the, either handset pretty early on. So keep that in mind, it's another thing you get with the high-end thing if you're into VR. Now for a size comparison, we have quite a lineup of phones this is the Galaxy S7 Edge right next to the standard S7. As you can see, the size is really actually surprisingly close. This is one of the most compact 5.5 inch phones on the market, particularly the width, the curving of the display does help. And hand discomfort mostly has to do with how wide a phone is, so that does make a difference. And as you can see, the S7 Edge is really not much bigger than the S7, quite an accomplishment there for a 5.5 inch phone. It is very comfortable in the hand. And if we put one on top of the other, you can see there's a difference in length, obviously, but the widths are almost the same there. So for those of you who like the idea of a big screen phone, but you're afraid of how it feels in hand, this one might actually be manageable for you. Go ahead and 
check it out. As a disclosure, I happen to have very large hands, long fingers, so I'm pretty comfortable with large phones in general. Next, we have the iPhone 6S Plus right here, 5.5 inch screen as well. It's just a big monster, isn't it, compared to this right here? Significantly larger. Of course, Apple has bigger side bezels and traditional sides on the phone as well. Lots of room for the home button, still rounded up there. And on this end, we have the giant Nexus 6 P, another very big phone. Obviously, different experience there. And lastly, this is last year's S6 Edge, not the Edge Plus, which was the bigger phone. So you can see the difference in size. If you had the S6 Edge, the S7 Edge will be bigger. Also new for the S7 Edge and also the regular S7. See there's a curve to the glass now on the back versus the S6 Edge, which was just a flat plane. So this actually makes it more comfortable to hold and a little bit more symmetrical since the front is curving too. So it's a subtle difference, but it's ergonomically a, a pleasant change, certainly. And as you can see, what black looks like after handling just a little bit, this is the one that's gonna show fingerprints the most. Now, probably a lot of people are gonna have cases on there anyway, so. Well, there's that. Now, speaking of ergonomics, not due to the size, but the, the dual edge display is still less ergonomic or comfortable to hold insofar as not that it's super dropsy, but there is still less to grab hold of here on the side. That's a very narrow band. So it, it, it's not real easy to keep a grip on. Also, if you put it down on the desk and you want to pick it up, there's not much to grab it by either. So ergonomically, it it may, it's still, it's, it's challenged folks. It, it really is. But it is the more beautiful phone, certainly. I mean, that is breathtaking. Other than those of you who are bothered by edge glare over here, I, it doesn't bother me at all. And the picture wrapping around just looks pretty on it. It's a stunning looking phone, certainly. Now, just like the standard S7 that we reviewed, you got the same layout here. Here's your headphone jack, USB, micro USB 2.0. Now, no USB-C, sorry about that, but as Samsung said they did that in part to maintain compatibility with that Gear VR virtual reality headset you saw that actually has a little place where the phone plugs into it. And there's your teeny speaker right there, much like the iPhone and one of the microphones. Side has the usual volume and power controls. And up here, we have more microphones and this is where your SIM and micro SD card slot are. And you do get a nice classy SIM pokey tool, but I'd like the bent paperclip just fine. So you pop that out and this is what you're going to see. Right there, the SIM card holder where the SIM card fell out and this is where the micro SD card goes. And we do have a 200 gig SanDisk card in there. It's working fine. Now this isn't one of those dual purpose carriers like we've seen on some recent unlock phones. This can only take one SIM card. It's a single SIM line phone, which is pretty much standard stuff for the U.S., but some other countries, I know you folks do like your dual SIM capability, but it's not here. The phone still has Samsung's own multitasking software. Anything you see the kind of double hamburger there, you can do side by side Split screen if you want. Smart stay is here. I'll keep an eye on you and won't turn off the screen if you're looking at the phone. Uh, the IR blaster, sorry, that's, that's gone. It seems like Samsung's just not putting it on their phones anymore. We're running Android 6.0 Marshmallow with Samsung's TouchWiz software. That's been updated to, to look nice with material design. It's a little bit less onerous. And in terms of performance, I mean, this, this Snapdragon 820 is one of the fastest CPUs that you're going to find on the market currently. And you can see our benchmarks right here as we scroll through. We're going to put up a benchmark slide on screen so you can see it. But Quadrant 40,127 on Tutu, a very impressive 129,769. There's our Geekbench 3 score right there. And there's 3D Mark Slingshot 2565, all respectable stuff. It's, there, there are no complaints about speed here. The launcher is very quick. Running programs is very quick. It's a responsive enough phone. And uh, Samsung's TouchWiz is, is, is not bad looking right here. We have the usual set of customizable icons for quick access. And the settings menu here has become a fairly manageable by default single item list. Phone has NFC, dual band Wi Fi, 811 AC, Bluetooth, all the usual stuff supports Samsung Pay, unless your carrier has hopelessly mucked with that. And Samsung Pay works a lot like Apple Pay for those of you who are thinking about switching over from Apple, and you can use your fingerprint to authorize a purchase with the phone.
So of course, one of the big features of the Edge model is the Edge screen now. Uh, this is still not as capable maybe as the Samsung Galaxy Note Edge from a couple of generations ago, but it's pretty good. Now you can set it to be either on the right or the left side. I am left-handed, so I have put the pull tab over here. So you have a quick launcher and it's actually you have the option to use more space now so you can have more icons on your quick launcher. CNN Top News, I had Yahoo News also as an option there. And if you, if you tap on that, there you go, you get your full weather for, forecast for the built-in weather application. So there's a couple of different downloadable edge screens that you can add on. There's even some that you can pay for, and you can control that from the edge screen, or you can go over here to control it too. So here we have the settings here. You can turn the edge panels on and off. You can have your nighttime bed clock, by the way, it quietly or low light illuminates over here to show you the time. You can have it face down and show you who's calling. It's actually visible. And if you want to add and control your edge panels, here you go. If you choose download, there's even more. Now some of them actually do cost money. There are third party developers doing that. Some of them are free, but you've got all sorts of stuff. For those of you who really like to watch how Samsung manages or mismanages your RAM, there's a RAM status one, for example, and that one is free. How much data you've used is even a file manager on the edge screen. That's real power user stuff, isn't it? So you get the idea. So I find it actually very useful. When I switch between the S7 Edge and the S7, I start sideswiping on the S7 because I'm just used to being able to quick launch programs from there or look at what's going on in the news headlines, that sort of thing. So I actually do find it useful and I do appreciate that it can be on the right or left hand side. So the camera interface is largely unchanged. Oh no, we have an attack cat here. From previous versions of the Samsung Galaxy S family, whoa, violent little man there, see? So we have our record, we have our shoot a photo, and you've got all your quick effects, your HDR on auto mode right there. So there's a variety of effects you can choose from. You get the idea. You know, Samsung may make a lot of complex software, tracking, autofocus, notice all this stuff, but they do a really good job of loading the camera with all sorts of features, including manual mode, if you want, without making it confusing. So good job there. And this actually is a good shot for HDR. Let's see how it did. Pretty good. Pretty much what we saw right on the screen. Now look at this. Stunning, absolutely stunning. The 12 megapixel camera with the Sony sensor is just the bee's knees, folks. It's good. So yeah, it is 12 megapixels rather than the outgoing 16, but that's so it can have larger sensor sites for better low light photography. And this is very sharp and very detailed. Look at that. It even captured the insect on the flowers right there. Really nicely. I it, It's it really is a good camera. I mean, there, <laughs> it's just something. Look at that. And that's not easy, a shiny reflective vehicle like that. So 4K video as well at 30 frames per second. Nice optical image stabilization there. And does this give the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus a run for the money? You bet it does. I, in fact, I have, I have to say that I actually like this one better. You probably didn't like that. They took away the How's SD the volume? You can see where the volume's at. This is not a loud phone folks. But in terms of video wrapping around the edge, I know some of you just feel like you might not like that. This is looks, it, I like the way that it looks with the video, video wrapping around the edges in the picture. And there you have it right around the edge. The video is still showing right there. Uh, overall, I think it looks pretty cool, but that's for you to decide. So you, you know, you've seen what it looks like, but the speaker, like I said, pff, you're going to want to use that nice headphone jack. So how about battery life? Last year's Galaxy S6 family wasn't all that for battery life, and Samsung has made some improvements here and also increased the capacity of the battery. So the phones are a little, just a little bit thicker than last year's models. This one has a 3600 milliamp battery versus the 3000 on the standard S7. So by virtue of getting a larger phone, you're also getting a bigger battery. And with the S7, we found it made it to the end of the day on a charge with moderate use. Heavy use, maybe not, but with pretty moderate use, it did. Of course, it was crying for the charger by 10 or 11 p.m. at night. And this one is actually still chilling. It's okay at bedtime, about 15% battery life left. And that's with, when I say moderate, I mean, you know, pretty actively using the phone, streaming some videos, making phone calls, hitting the web, doing email many times a day. So it should be fine. Now, if you're playing games or something like that, it's going to drain a whole lot faster. Call quality is just like the S7, and that's a good thing. Nice, clear, crisp voice, adequate volume through the earpiece. There's even an earpiece boost function if you need it. I didn't have any trouble hearing people, even in a kind of noisy big box store environment. 
How do you choose between these two? Well, really, it comes down to which size you prefer. What do you think it's worth an extra $100 to get the curved sides? And that's a decision that's best made by you. I, I tend to like larger phones. So I, I was leaning towards the edge myself. But, you know, I, I do find that that's, it's hard to hold on to. It's harder to pick up. And then that kind of moves me back towards the S7. So it's not an easy choice to make. So that's the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. It and the S7 are definitely the best phones that Samsung has made yet, unless you like the Note series and you want the pen. For the penless folks out there, they've gotten it all right this time. It's a gorgeous looking phone. It's available in several colors, from glitzy gold to more stayed black. That's going to show fingerprints like mad, but oh well, you can't have everything. It's fast. It's running the latest Marshmallow. Now, you know, Samsung on their OS updates, they probably won't be running the latest OS for long, will it? But... The camera on this is really superb. The display is beautiful, and the look of the edge screen is really appealing. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written review, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.